live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program. We go out to all the shows, help extract the signal from the noise. Uh, here our fourth year at the MIT CDOIQ, which is the Chief Data Officer in Information Quality. Uh, in the time that we've been covering this event, it's it's really the the mashup of a lot of trends we've been seeing. Uh, talk talk about you know data itself, analytics, big data. Uh, happy to have on the program uh, two first. First, I've got George Gilbert, uh, who's part of the analyst team at Wikibon, and first time guest on the program, uh, Steve Todd, who's an EMC fellow, of course with EMC, and actually somebody I've known for years. Uh, Steve, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Stu. Reunited, and it feels so good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, absolutely. So, Steve, for our audience that doesn't know you, just give us a little bit about your background and what your role is at EMC. Sure. Well, I, actually, last month, Stu, was my 30-year anniversary with, with EMC. Uh, that includes uh, 14 years with Data General, where I was one of the founders of the, of the Clarion storage subsystem. So 25 years as a software engineer uh, working on building EMC's products in the last five years in the CTO office, uh, working on innovation, strategy, and research objectives. All right, so, so help us you know, connect the dots, going from storage to, now, now we're talking about data and data governance and uh, you know, all, all of these pieces. How, how does that connect to what you're doing today? So I would say, uh, you know, when you look at storage, uh, the trend is just continue to move up the stack, right? We move storage systems, we move towards switches, and then we moved up into the server, and we moved up into consumption models, and now it's, uh, we're, we're seeing these trends about the volume of data are driving these new digital business models, and uh, it's hard to get a handle on what exactly is the value of data, which is why uh, EMC, as a, as a uh, one of the largest vendors storing data would love to figure this problem out. Yeah. All right, so, so George, let, let's pull you into the conversation here. You, you, know, you cover you know, analytics for many years now before we called it big data on this side. What, 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 what about data itself? Where is the value in data? How, how, how does that fit into kind of your research? Well, um, it's actually interesting because it's very hard to draw a line between data and analytics in the sense that what we've learned over the last few years what seeped into the mainstream is that data by itself has value. Um, analytics by itself, in terms of the algorithm, um, has value. But it's the magic comes when you fuse the two. Because when you have a natural sort of boundary between two sort of categories of value, no one really makes money at the intersection. It's only when it's really hard to put the two together, like with the weather channel, that, uh, or not the channel, but the weather company that IBM bought. That's a huge amount of data and some really sophisticated models. Putting it together, no one else could do it. All right, so uh, Steve, you inside EMC have been looking at uh, the, the, this data value piece. Can you know, talk a little bit about what kind of spurred that initiative and, and what is the initiative that you've been working sure. on? Sure, two years ago, uh, EMC joined together with Capgemini, and we, we did a survey on big data. And one of the surprising results that came out of that is two-thirds of the respondents said they believe within a few years uh, the revenues they'll get from data will equal or exceed the revenues that they get from selling their own products. So we looked at that and said, well, is that true? And if it is, uh, how can we help uh, our customers and help the industry cross over to that type of model where they're actually getting revenue off of data in addition to the revenue they're currently getting from their products? So that's why uh, we reached out to one of the experts in academia, Dr. Jim Short, from the San Diego Supercomputer Center. And we joined with him about a year and a half ago to, to validate that statement and then to plan about how we would reach that result. Yeah, it's, it's a, we had a conversation earlier today uh, with SAP who talked about uh, you know, moving data from just being part of the application mm -hmm. to really you know, getting value out of data, how the business owners do it. I mean, George, as you look at the kind of application stack, uh, you know, how, how's that migration, how's that, that change happening about kind of data ownership and data value? Well, this, it's, it's a really good question because for essentially 40 years, maybe more, ever since we started building apps, whether by hand or in packages, you would you'd do this thing called 
uh, schema design, which is, think of it as a bucket brigade where you put exactly, you designed exactly where the data was going to go um, for an application, and then you put these forms across it which drove the workflow or the business mm. processes. And we couldn't have changed more in an era of big data where essentially you put the data in this repository without any upfront or very minimal design, and the data, well, as we were talking about before, when you fuse it with the analytics, out of that fusion sort of bubbles up the application. And it's the data that informs how the application works. And since that data is always changing, you're adding new stuff, um, not just variations on what you have, but new sources, the data, the application is always evolving. Mm. Yeah, so Steve, I know you've seen uh, both at Wikibon and through the, the video coverage we've been doing with theCUBE, uh, th this is a topic that's kind of interesting and you know crossing a number of domains. So you know we, we cover both the infrastructure, kind of cloud, the analytics, and uh, as, uh, as you, you wrote in your first book, some of those Venn diagram innovations where you cross some of the boundaries and re some, some of the existing pieces, you get some interesting ideas. So you know what, <laughs> we, we've had some conversations. What have you seen, kind of what we're doing, what we're covering, um, you know, what we're kind of unearthing in the industry? So one of the things I've noticed from the Wikibon coverage is, uh, I noticed you interviewed Stephen Manley from our data protection division and asked him the question about data value. And as, uh, as the industry comes to understand the true value of their data, and as that value goes up, the need for protection goes up. So that's one of the first insights that we've seen is uh, helping our customers or helping the industry categorize and understand the value in terms of, let's keep a metadata repository that tracks value and watch that value move up and down and make, uh, placement decision or protection uh, decisions based on that value changing. Yeah, so what does that mean as, as data becomes more dispersed? So it used to be, you know, I, I built a data temple, now it's data's everywhere, things like IOT are going to spread things even, even further out there, public cloud, you know, what, what does that mean? How does EMC look at that holistically in, in that space? So in order to track value holistically, again, you have to keep a metadata repository that tracks that value. And, and the only way to scale that globally is to use the same uh, technology that you use to globally scale data, which is object-based approaches. So as we think about attaching uh, valuation metadata to content, we think about associating that directly with the content and using the same techniques to scale that valuation metadata that you do with the content itself. Okay, so are you saying there needs to be some tie with the infrastructure? Because th that almost goes a little bit counter to money with things that I've seen that we should be able to kind of abstract away from the infrastructure. So I think uh, if, you, if you abstract away from the infrastructure, then you're, you're keeping your metadata about valuation separate from your content. And the orchestration of that becomes more complicated. So it's, it's possible. Uh, but by understanding a little bit about the underlying technology, you can actually uh, leverage some of the benefits of it. Yeah, uh, George, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts. Metadata is something, I, I know when I joined Wikibon six years ago, David Floyer had been talking about it for years. It's one of those gnarly challenges that we've had in the industry. Mm -hmm. how, how do you see that discussion evolving? Well, so far I've seen, um, and I am spent more of my time up on the analytics and apps layer, but from what I've seen, the, the two broad choices are, um, you have a, a data value chain that starts all the way in, back in the operational mm -hmm. apps, and it moves, the data moves over to your sort of analytic repository, mm -hmm. increasingly a data lake, but also a data warehouse, and then operationalizing those, those insights. And there are not a lot of metadata solutions that we've come across that take you through that data life cycle mm -hmm. from birth to death. And, um, um, at the same time, if you have metadata solutions that do a good job of, you know, sort of slicing that up, mm. then stitching them together is very difficult. Mm. So, and, and then one other wrinkle, which is that the sort of buying power for uh, how to consume data in business intelligence and analytics mm. is shifting into the line of business. And they, uh, IT and the line of business have yet to come to terms with how does um, IT provide guardrails mm. so that line of business doesn't sort of take the data and mangle it in a way that no one knows where it came from. Right. Can a comment on that, Steve? Or? So I, I uh, one of the things I'm learning in this conference is chief data officers um, 
who I thought before today uh, don't care too much about the infrastructure. I just went to a session with a CDO and a CEIO sitting side by side, uh, collaborating very closely on new types of data platforms that can support things like valuation. Yep. So I think the abstraction away from the infrastructure in the industry is happening. Maybe we over rotate it a little bit and, and there's reason to bring it back and have the CDO and the CIO work more closely together. Yeah, I, I know we've seen the last few years on this. They, they, they need to work together. I, I think uh, many said the CDO probably shouldn't report to the CIO, but uh, they will set, as George said, the kind of the guardrails uh, mm. and some of the operations pieces, but the CIO is going to be the one involved with the technology and the tools uh, for that. So does that, that seem a, a decent uh, kind of separation of power? Well, I, um, I, I think that the separation of power that you specified is accurate. There's also a separation of power with the CISO, right? So it's the three working together and the CDO doesn't want to get too much into the infrastructure, doesn't want to get too much into security and privacy, but needs to uh, make sure that all three are working together. Okay, so Steve, uh, you're going to be coming back to speak with us tomorrow. Uh, for people that want to find out more about kind of the data value research that you have that aren't here at the show, of course they, they can watch the other segments we're doing, but where else can they go find some more information on this? Well certainly, uh, as we learn more from the research with Dr. Short in San Diego, uh, we're publishing everything we find on uh, my own personal blog and other EMC related blogs. Uh, but in a nutshell, Dr. Short is, is focusing on what are some of the new processes and new roles uh, that organizations are going to need to roll out in order to uh, value data appropriately. Well, I'm looking at uh, what is the impact of the IT architectures. And again, all of this is rolled out on, on my blog or on my Twitter handle. Okay, great. And we've also got a website that we're going to help uh, pull this information together. If you go to thecube365.com slash MIT CDO IQ, have a collection of the videos we're doing here, have a link to some of the stuff that Steve's talking to, and we'll be back here with lots more coverage from the MIT CDO IQ 2016. You've been watching the Cube.